G'day everyone, Mitch here again with the 1925 Ford Model T. In this video we're going to be doing something which I was actually uh, requested to do, and that was to do a, a bit of a point of view tutorial on how to drive a Model T Ford. Basically um, what I've got set up in here and how I'm talking to you now, I've got a GoPro camera rig set up on the uh, roof of the Model T, um, providing a nice view of all the controls so you can see clearly what I'm doing. So this video was actually a request uh, by one of my subscribers uh, on YouTube, so we're going to be looking today at in depth again how to drive the Model T Ford, but this time with a different spin on it. Uh, we're doing a point of view uh, video here. So let's get cracking. Okay, so what we'll do first is we'll just recap the controls just to refresh your memory. Starting with the pedals, the pedal on the left is your clutch, the middle pedal is reverse and the right hand pedal is your brake. Now, a Model T Ford, in order to move forward in first gear, we actually push the left pedal, I'll use my foot here, push the left pedal all the way down to the floor, and that allows us to move forward in first gear. But before we do that, we actually need to release the parking brake. Now the parking brake actually serves two functions. It serves, obviously, as one, as your parking brake, and secondly, it serves as your gear shift lever. Now when we want to move forward in first gear, obviously like in a modern car it's probably a good idea to have your foot on the brake when you go to release the handbrake, especially if you're parked on a slope. So I'll just put the brake in just to be sure. Now when the handbrake is pulled all the way back in the position it is now, basically the handbrake is engaged, in other words the car can't roll away and the transmission is in neutral. Now when we want to move forward in first gear, we take hold of the handbrake, we move that forward to the middle position. And what that does is, first of all, it releases the parking brake, and secondly, it also maintains the car in a neutral state. So now, if I was to take my foot off the brake now, the car would actually roll forward. Now, if I want to move off in first gear, we have the handbrake in the center position where it is now, and then I step down firmly on the left pedal and release the brake as well, obviously. Now, when I want to shift up into second gear or high gear, there's only two forward gears in the Model T. When I want high gear, what I'll actually do is keeping my foot on the uh, left pedal as it is now. Obviously the throttle is going to be open a bit. You're going to be going along. When I want to shift up into second gear, what I'll then do is I will push this lever all the way forward, like so, and then I will re uh, reduce the revs, because like you do in a modern car, you take your foot off the accelerator, we reduce the revs, push the throttle up like so, release, the clutch and then go back onto the throttle again to um, continue moving. I'll show you in a moment what that looks like in practice but there's your basic uh, your basic principle there. Now the left pedal also has another purpose. When the handbrake lever is all the way forward like it is now we can also get neutral on this pedal simply by pushing it in halfway. Now that takes some practice and it took me quite a bit of practice to get that right when I first started driving. I was when I first started, I, I made a point of pulling the handbrake back to halfway and then going onto the brake to stop. But what you can actually do with practice is um, when you're in second gear, you can push the clutch pedal in halfway, which takes it out of gear, you're now in neutral, you're coasting, and then you can apply the brake all the way to stop. And then if you want to take your feet off the pedals, let's say you've pulled up at a set of traffic lights, you can then pull the handbrake lever all the way back and then take your feet off the pedals. Now, if we want to back up, procedure is simple. Again, we'll just keep our foot on the brake just in case we're on a slope. Push the handbrake to the halfway point and then simply step on the reverse pedal in the middle to go backwards. And then when we're stopped, don't forget to put the handbrake back on. And obviously the right hand pedal speaks for itself um, is your brake. Now, of course, we have to, uh, we have to manage the uh, spark advance and the throttle while we're driving. Now, as a general rule of thumb, if you're on the flat or going down a hill, we want the spark advance somewhere near the bottom of the quadrant while we're driving, so that the engines uh, uh, you can ma make maximum use of the of the engine's power while you're driving. Now, if you want to go up a hill, we, obviously we don't want to have the uh, spark fully advance, otherwise we're going to end up uh, loading up the motor and quite possibly breaking something, and uh, quite possibly the crankshaft is a, is a common one uh, with Model Ts in that instance. So when we want to climb a hill, if the car is capable of doing it in top gear, which for the most for, for most hills sort of around where I live, I can climb most of them in top gear. 
But what you must remember to do when you're climbing hills is retard the spark. So in other words, the uh, <clears throat> so in other words, the, the spark is actually occurring earlier in the cycle rather than later. And then what you so what you're doing then retard the spark and increase throttle to allow you to climb a hill. Now let's say let's say you're on that hill and you find that you can't quite do it in top gear you need to change back down to first gear how do we do that quite simple so let's just pretend for a moment that uh, we're in uh, top gear so we push that all the way forward you'll notice the uh, the pedals all the way out let's say i want to change down back into first gear now if i just straight away push down on that pedal i'm going to be the car is, i'm going to lurch forward because it's, it'll be like suddenly applying a brake that's what it feels like in practice so when you want to change down into first gear, what it's always a good idea to do, back right off on the throttle, maybe a little bit of braking depending on how fast you're going, and then you want to ease in on the low pedal. And it's as simple as that. And you don't actually have to, uh, you don't actually have to bring the handbrake back when you're in first gear, the pedal is dictating what gear you're in. Likewise, when you want to speed up again, we give it some throttle, rev it up, get ourselves up to speed, back off the throttle, release the pedal and then go back on the throttle again when you're in second gear. So I'll stop talking now, what we'll do is I'll, I'll get the car started, we'll go for a drive and I'll show you what the gear changes look like in practice. Okay, so I found a nice uh, little quiet spot where, we're, where I can uh, show you uh, how it works in practice and, um, and then you'll be able to go off and uh, practice it yourself with your own Model T. So basically, obviously we've already got the engine running as you saw before. What we're going to do now, I've got the parking brake set at the moment because obviously we're stationary. So when I want to pull away, uh, basically what I want to do, I'll put, I always make a habit of putting my foot on the brake first. I'm going to put the handbrake in the neutral position. And next I'm going to I'll probably start off with the uh, with the spark advance, probably about halfway seems to be the sweet spot on my car. So somewhere somewhere between fully retarded and halfway seems to be um, good for most um, pulling away applications. Probably um, if you're pulling away on a going uphill, doing a hill start, you probably want to be a bit more retarded than I am now. And then advance it as you start to move. So what we're going to do first, we're going to increase the revs, increase the uh, engine speed, and then we're going to press down firmly on the clutch Unlike a modern car where you, where you bring the clutch out gradually, um, on a Model T you need to be pushing down fairly firmly on the clutch from the off, otherwise you'll, uh, you'll, you'll burn your transmission bands, which obviously you don't want to be doing. So we need to get a good grip on those drums as soon as we start to move. Okay, so in practice, here's what it looks like. We increase the revs and we push down firmly on the clutch. And we move off. Now. When I want second gear, we push the handbrake all the way forward. A bit more revs. No revs. Release the clutch. And we're now in second gear. I'll just turn around and come into the end of this road. So we'll push the clutch in halfway to put it in neutral. And with practice, you'll be able to do this too. So I'm now actually coasting, running out of, uh, running out of puffs. So we'll put it in low gear like so by pushing on the low pedal. I'll just pull over here and I'll show you the whole procedure again. So I've got the left pedal halfway up at the moment, which means I'm in neutral, which means I won't stall it. Put the handbrake on, I can now safely take my feet off the pedals. Now at the moment the engine's only sort of ticking over, if I want to go faster, I pull down on the throttle lever on the right here. Now we come to the end of the road, so we'll back off the throttle all the way, start to brake, push the clutch in halfway and we come to a stop okay okay what I'm going to show you now is a scenario where let's say you're pulling up to an intersection say a set of traffic lights or a, or a stop sign and you don't really want to have to put the handbrake on for this stop it's you're only stopping for a short period of time I'm going to show you how to come to a stop using only the pedals and we'll leave the handbrake lever all the way forward in the high gear position so what we'll do now is I'll just turn the car around. Okay, I need to back up. So the center pedal is reverse. 
You have to forgive me, my boots are a little bit big to fit between the pedals. Okay. So we're now stopped. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to proceed up to the end of this road, or about halfway up this road, and I'm going to show you how to stop using only the pedals. We won't touch the handbrake lever at all. Pulling away as we normally do. Changing up into second gear. Like so. Okay. Now let's say I'm coming up to a, a set of traffic lights, for example. I'm not really, but for the sake of an example here, when we want to stop, shut off the throttle, push the pedal, the uh, clutch pedal in halfway, and then step all the way down on the brake to bring the car to a complete stop. Now as you can see, the handbrake lever is still in the all the way forward position, which means if I was to release the clutch now, I'd be attempting to pull away in second gear, which obviously isn't going to work too well, the car's going to stall. Okay. Now, where I've stopped here is actually on a little bit of a slope. The, uh, the beautiful thing about a Model T is a hill start is actually easier in a Model T than it is in a modern car. Now let's say we're doing this with a handbrake all the way back. I can release the pedals now because the parking brake is holding the car still. When I want to pull away and do a hill start in a Model T, we start with our foot on the brake exactly as we do normally and we just go a little bit more revs and away we go. Now how easy was that? Okay, now because we are climbing a hill, we are climbing a hill, we must make sure that the spark advance lever is all the way retarded or as close to, so that the engine isn't labouring as you're climbing the hill. Okay, so what I'm going to demonstrate to you now, I won't, uh, I'll, I'll try and keep uh, talking to a minimum because I'll be going um, uh, fairly quickly, so there'll probably be some uh, wind noise in the video. Um, we're going to go for a drive now at, uh, at a higher speed and demonstrate to you um, what, what the procedures would be when you're taking on a hill and uh, you start to get a bit down on power or things like that. So we'll go for a drive up the road to where there's a good hill to practice on and uh, I'll show you uh, what we have to do. Okay, so for the final bit of this video, we're going to be uh, turning right here back onto the main road again. And almost immediately there is a hill climb to do, so we may or may not need to drop down to first gear for this one. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, it's not too steep of an incline, we should be okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright, so here we go. Handbrake in neutral, upper ramps, clutch in. we go on this hill. So we've got the spark mostly uh, retarded for this hill climb. Probably gives you an idea just how slowly we're going up this hill by the uh, locals going past. Now just before
before I finish this video, one final um, thing I will point out to you. If you do happen to um, pull up at a set of traffic lights or if you're stuck in traffic for any length of time, <coughs> if, uh, particularly if it's any length of time with the engine running, um, obviously you want to have the, uh, the throttle uh, closed so uh, you're not uh, racing the engine. But the important thing to remember also when you're stopped is, to, uh, is also to retard the spark as well. Um, the reason for this is if you leave the, uh, leave the spark fully advanced while you're stationary, um, you're going to be getting a very hot engine very quickly. So if you're going to be sitting idle for any length of time with the engine running, always retard the spark fully uh, because otherwise yeah, you'll end up, end up um, cooking your engine. But um, for, the sake of, uh, for the sake of looking after your engine, and I've stalled it, never mind, for the sake of looking after your engine while, while you are stationary and so it doesn't overheat, always um, retard the spark there. Alrighty, well, <clears throat> I hope this video has been uh, of some use to you. And once again, and as always, thank you very, very much for watching. And don't forget to, if you haven't already, don't forget to uh, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel as well, because that's uh, that's what uh, really uh, helps to keep this channel going, is you guys, my subscribers. Yeah, I, I really, I couldn't do this without you. I've got one video that's, uh, I think it's, it's coming up at the point when I uploaded this video. Uh, the first video I uploaded is actually very close to 1 million views, so I can't thank you guys enough for that. All right, guys, I'll, um, I'll sign off now, and um, we'll see you in the next video. As always, thank you very much for watching. Catch you later, guys.